Hi, I'm Mayor Westmoreland. Thank you for joining me for an inside look at Eagle Mountain City. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you to uh, Aaron Sanborn, our Economic Developments Director. Uh, welcome, Aaron. Good to be here, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, tell, uh, tell us a little bit about, about yourself. A little bit about me. So, um, I've been working with the city now for approximately about seven years in total. Time has definitely flown in that time. Um, I got my, my master's degree in public administration at BYU um, and you know, really loved local government. Lo love the chance that we have to, to make a, a difference in, in people's lives and to, to have some kind of an impact. Um, my, my wife and I have four beautiful kids that um, keep us busy and um, it's, it's a great adventure to, to have them and, and absolutely one of the things that we love you know, as, as we get to come out here to Eagle Mountain and explore is the, the opportunities that are here. You know, the open space, recreation, I mean, just seeing the growth is one of the things that is fantastic, that is, is exciting for me uh, in, in my position, definitely, but also just to, just to see, you know, what, what goes on um, as some of an outsider as well. And so it's great to, to get that chance and to be a, be a little bit of a part of it. Well, in that time that you've been here, you've been on a little bit of a roller coaster, right? So you, you've you, you've seen all kinds of changes uh, take place. So absolutely, uh, yeah. Now, when you first started as economic development director, uh, was it just gangbusters right out of the gate? No. So we we've been working the economic development side of things for a long time without really much success. You know, when I first started this position. We had the Ridley's, you know, grocery store, uh, a few gas stations, a few other things, but that was largely it. Um, and so I've been able to, to see this boom happen in Eagle Mountain and be, you know, kind of involved in, in that, even just in some small way. Um, you know, it's, it's wonderful to see the, the development community, the business community really invest in Eagle Mountain and to have that chance to, to be a part of it, to witness it is absolutely fantastic. And like I said, it's been something that we've been working on for for many years, you know, and, and having to to grind it out and to, to be there with with no success, and then now to see everything starting to really kick off is is wonderful and exciting. So uh, yeah, you've obviously been very busy. We appreciate all of your hard work. Now, why is it that you put so much work into economic development? What makes economic development so important for our city and for our residents? Yeah, that's a, it's a wonderful question, and I think it really comes down to a, a couple of, of main things. And really, when you talk about economic development, at the heart, you're talking about quality of life. You know, you're talking about being able to create a community that people want to be in. You know, if, if we're just all homes, you know, and everyone is having to drive you know, long distances for work, for, for shopping, it, it makes it you don't want to be there. Yeah, those are probably some of the first things our residents would notice. Absolutely. Is, is the jobs, yeah. the, the, the local uh, good paying jobs, and the conveniences of having uh, those uh, retail establishments here. Yeah, and, and those things are, are so important to making kind of, of a, a healthy community because then you have all those closer to home, which also then goes to, to help the, you know, the tax base of the city, you know, and that's Ultimately, when you look at economic development, it's about the economic vitality of a community where we, we kind of have the option where if we want to provide services to our residents, we can either put that on the back solely of, of, of homes, of residents, or we can create more of a, of a business community so that that's able to be shared and, and they bring in you know, wonderful resources to be able to, to help us create the kind of city that we want to, to live in and, and to work in. And it's, a, it's a great opportunity to be able to, to help in that process of, of creating an economic, you know, vibrant city. Well, I realize that taxes and revenue are not your thing. Now, that's not what you focus on. But definitely, economic development impacts that in a big way. Because as you mentioned, uh, without Without businesses here, without industry here, our only tax base is our uh, homeowners, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then when it comes down to paying for things that we want to have here, you know, we, we like to have parks, we like to have trails, we like to have open space, all of that stuff, it, it costs money to get there. And so where is that funding going to come from? And, 
having partners, industrial commercial partners here, provides a whole nother revenue source that we didn't have before. Absolutely. Uh, now, it, again, I, I don't want to put too much uh, pressure on you and talking about taxes, but, but I think one more point we need to make in that regard is uh, the, uh, what's generally referred to as, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, tax leakage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Can you explain that to yeah, us? Yeah, absolutely. It's a pretty straightforward concept when you think about it. Um, when you and just look out at Eagle Mountain City at what we have currently when it comes to more retail, um, we don't have very much. You know, we, there's a lot of um, services that if you want to, you know, to, to get, you have to travel to Saratoga Springs, travel to Lehigh, American Fork, all these different cities to make these purchases. And, and what we refer to that is sales tax leakage, where the sales tax dollars that our residents are spending are not staying here in Eagle Mountain. They're, they're going to help fund other cities. Um, and certainly those other cities, they, they love that because they get to, to capture the sales tax dollars <clears throat> from our residents, but it doesn't provide much of a benefit to us. Um, and, and that's one of the things where we look at the, this sales tax leakage that we're able to, to help capture some of that here. And certainly as we continue to grow, our, our retail you know, businesses, that trend will, will start to reverse. We've been very fortunate with how the, the state um, divvies out the sales tax dollars, that a portion of that is based on our population. And so we get to, to keep some of the sales tax dollars from other cities as well. And, but also the, the shift to online sales too is a, is a whole different dynamic um, that is really just picking off and, um, and growing in such a way that we're starting to see some of those additional dollars come in where traditionally those all just leak out. And so there's, there's some shifting dynamics definitely when it comes to, to sales tax that we're keeping an eye on um, and, and kind of trying to see where, where trends go and how the state is going to, um, to divvy those dollars out. But certainly it's, it's, it's rarely apparent that we are leaking a lot of our sales tax dollars to a lot of these other cities. And part of, of my role and part of our focus is to see how, what we can do to, to bring more retail closer to home, you know, across all different services, so that not only are we providing service to our residents, but we're able to, to stop some of that sales tax leakage as well. Aaron, I'm sure you've had a lot of questions from people asking, why don't we have a particular business? Or can you go get us a Chick-fil-A or a, a Costco or something? Uh, uh, how can you respond to that? Yeah, absolutely. When you look at a lot of these retailers, especially the, the national chains, they have a very strict criteria as far as what they look at when they're going into a community. And mainly, they'll look at the rooftops that are around as well as the traffic patterns to kind of see where where those are, are going. And yeah, tell us what you mean by traffic patterns. Yeah, when you at, at the very core of it, it's where the car is driving. And for Eagle Mountain, most of those cars are driving east. And there's very little pass-through traffic from other communities. And so it's largely just based off of what is here right now in Eagle Mountain. And because of most of the traffic flowing to the east, rather than staying here in the city or, you know, or going west, is that retailers are looking at you know, Saratoga Springs, Lehigh, and realizing they're capturing all the Eagle Mountain residents already. And so it's, it's difficult for them to justify you know, locating here in the city when they can locate in Lehigh, American Fork, Saratoga Springs, and capture all of that as well. So that's where it's really critical for us to flip the traffic, to, to get more people coming to the west, whether that's through outdoor recreation, whether that's through events or through daytime population, through jobs. That really is the, the focus for us to be able to flip the traffic patterns and be able to help convince the retailers that people are coming to Eagle Mountain so it makes more sense for them to locate here. And so certainly as we continue to grow um, both economically and residentially, we'll start to see that traffic coming out more to the west and these retailers who are looking at these very kind of stringent criteria will be able to see that Eagle Mountain makes more sense for them to locate here. So we're trying to achieve more uh, daytime population with various methods. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how uh, companies like Facebook and Tyson impact that? 
Absolutely. You know, they, they bring in construction traffic you know, through those processes as well as employees that will work on site. You know, those are, are critical to, to the daytime population because then people can see that it's not just everyone leaving to go to work, but they're here and they need some place to go to eat for lunch or they need to go pick up groceries on their way home from work. And that really is critical to convincing retailers that there are people here that are going to be shopping more than just what already exists here because they can, they can see the rooftops. They can see the growth when that happens. But they, what they really want to see is how is the traffic going to change and how are you going to be able to support our businesses throughout the day. Right, it's those daytime dollars and uh, certainly having all of those employees, the staff, the construction workers out of those sites really has been a real, uh, well, uh, saved our, many of our local businesses, particularly through the COVID-19 months, and, uh, and kept, kept them going. And uh, we've seen, uh, and we are seeing, businesses, particularly uh, you know, retail food establishments, growing up around uh, these larger companies. Absolutely. Uh, we're seeing uh, additional companies coming around Ridley's. Can you tell us a little bit about that area? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the Ridley's area has been one of the, um, our main, obviously, commercial retail hubs. And, and recently, there's been a lot of construction going on there. You know, McDonald's has announced that, and, and they're you know, well under construction with their um, first restaurant here in the city. And we anticipate that within the next few months, um, that restaurant will be fully operational and, and ready to, to start serving Big Macs. Um, also, in that same area, we, we have started to see blocks go up for um, an auto zone. So we have, you know, have our first auto parts store um, across the street. We have a couple of businesses that, that are coming in, both Dollar Tree, which residents will, will, will see as kind of the, the, the main construction over there right now. But also approved over there, there's been a 7-Eleven, there's been an O'Reilly's Auto Parts, we'll have kind of dueling auto parts stores, as well as Cascade Collision uh, has, has been approved for development over on that side. And so certainly the, the Ridley's area uh, is starting to see a lot of new construction, as well as seeing some of the, the current buildings start to fill in. You know, we, we have um, an arcade that we just did a, um, a ribbon cutting for, um, which is a, you know, it's a great feature here in Eagle Mountain with our, our young population, lots of kids. It's a great spot for them to be able to, to gather um, right there next to the Quenchia. And so there's a lot of these businesses that um, we're, we're starting to see come in to provide services to our residents that are, that are somewhat unique. And we, and we love to see that. We love to see, you know, obviously the, the Facebooks and the Tysons of the world, but also the, these small companies, you know, Quenchia, um, the arcade, that are, are more homegrown, that are, that are wonderful additions to our, our business community as well. All right, so th that covers the Ridley's area uh, uh, pretty well, and I'm sure we'll hear more announcements in the, in the coming months uh, for that area. But also, uh, there are big plans for City Center as well. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and we will have a follow-up video on, on this, so we'll get more, in more detail later. But can you tell us a little bit about what's happening right here by City Hall? Yeah, certainly the, the, the biggest and most exciting news is that Macy's has announced that they're building our second grocery store here in Eagle Mountain, the first one here in City Center, um, which, is, which is fantastic news. You know, for us to have a second grocery option, um, it, it, it's big. It, it, it speaks to the, the growth that we're seeing and the opportunities that are here. That is a, that area is about a 40 acre um, commercial development that, that's anchored by, by the Macy's. And, and we certainly expect to see a lot of development fairly soon in that area. The, the developer has told us that by the end of the year as many as six or more buildings will be under construction over there. Um, there aren't many that have officially you know, an announced that they're coming or submitted plans to us yet but we've heard you know, rumors of several restaurants, uh, fast food restaurants that are looking um, to, um, to, to come in there, um, a credit union as well, um, looking to, to purchase land as well as another gas station, looking to to build over there and the developer has told us that they've been absolutely floored by the, the response from retailers and that's music to my ears you know, to hear that even developers are being surprised by the interest in Eagle Mountain is absolutely wonderful because that speaks to the opportunities that are here 
and that development will include office space as well, which is something that we don't have very much of right now. But office space is a, is a tremendous area of growth, even with kind of the, the changes that we've seen with, with working remotely, working from home. Um, there's still chances for us to, to capture some of that office space, which again goes to add daytime population, which helps to support the other areas of economic development. So it really is all a, you know, a symbiotic relationship when we talk about economic development, where one area is going to go to support others as well. Yes, and this is uh, obviously the result of years of, of preparing the ground, uh, uh, preparing the way for these companies. And yeah, unfortunately, uh, there are a lot of interesting things happening that we're not in a position to make official s statements on yet. Uh, but yeah, there's, as you mentioned, there's a lot of interest in Eagle Mountain from many different sectors of, of business. So uh, we will be looking forward to those announcements. Anything else you want to share with us before we wrap it up? No, I mean, like, like you mentioned, Eagle Mountain is, you know, is primed for a lot of, of great opportunities. And it's, it's amazing to, to watch and see, you know, in the time that I've been here with the city, you know, it's been unbelievable to see the kind of growth that, that's occurred in all areas. And that is only going to continue. You know, we, we have so much of our, our land still available um, and the great thing is that we can see it filled with opportunities for the Eagle Mountain residents. And that's ultimately what, what economic development is about. It, you know, it's, it's creating that environment so that the residents are, are able to, to experience a, a better quality of life, to have those services right there for them, as well as to create a, a, a business community that is, is thriving. And with these great partners, we're able to, to definitely see that. Yeah, I, I think you, you hit right on it there. You know, we know that a lot of interesting, perhaps even uh, concerning things are happening throughout the country and the world regarding the economy. And uh, we're working to put uh, our local economy in the best position possible uh, for the benefit of our, our residents here, for our thriving community. Well, Aaron, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you nice for time. all that you do. And uh, thank, uh, thank you to all of our residents for uh, for joining us for this discussion uh, and we hope to uh, talk to you soon. Thank you.